What's up? Welcome in, Hogan Johns. We're back from Palm Beach, Florida, um, but there's no Hogue. Say hi to Kevin Fishbane, everybody. Or you should say hi, Kevin. That's how we should say it. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're not... <laughs> Hogue is not still on Palm Beach, on the beach, shirtless, sending us a picture of himself. He is not. He's, Thank God. He's, yes. He kept there, he kept his shirt on as long as I was with him <laughs> this week in Palm You were beach. at the same hotel. We were. You Although guys he did, pool I together. think he did go by the pool. I, I went by the pool, but I just sat by it, shirt on. So the if hotel... I take, if I take my shirt off in Florida, I'm sunburned within three seconds. So. so so get this. The hotel that I stayed at in Palm Beach, Florida, did not have a, a pool. Hmm. Isn't it like a prerequisite in Florida to have a pool with every hotel? What one would think. One would think. Well, one you are right think. by the ocean, which is a you know and the I was not pool by there the, is. Yeah, but I was not oh, by was, the ocean. <laughs> the hotel, yeah, yeah. Bad travel plans on my part. It's all right. We were there for work anyway. We are back. Hogue and Johns, the fish man, Kevin Fishbane is filling in for Adam Hogue, who is on break. We'll call it a couple days off. For him, but we're back to fully digest, go through everything that we heard from GM Ryan Poles, new head coach Matt Eberflus, and chairman George McCaskey, who talked to us after our last podcast recording. So we have to talk about what the Bears chairman told us, Seaside, Oceanside, at the Breakers Resort. Um, you know the deal. Follow us on Twitter. This is at KFishbane, B-A-I-N, there at the end. Uh, read us, myself, Kevin, Dan Pompey, who's got a great piece on Steve Mongo McMichael on The Athletic. I'm at, at Adam Johns. You can follow at Adam Hogue. Uh, and he's at CHGO Sports now. I was about to say NBC Sports Chicago there. I'm, so, I'm not so used to it, but when I host, that's what I usually say, Kev. So he is at CHGO Sports now. I was watching CHGO today, and they were discussing what um, the perfect Chicago baseball day would be. Not today. No, def- I think definitely not today. There's snowflakes like, today. Yeah, it's um, you, you've got opening day this weekend. I don't think it's going to start. <laughs> Back, yeah, Cubs got opening day a uh, week from Thursday or a week from today. Yeah, the Johns boys baseball season is supposed to start this Saturday, but it's ninety percent chance of rain and about forty two degrees. I think Coach Adam is going to postpone that one. No reason to catch a cold or a flu or whatever this early in the baseball season. You know, Coach. I, I, back in my coaching days, I backloaded that schedule as much as I could into June, which was nice, except when you did have the April rainouts. Then you're playing like eight games in a week come June. But yeah. what, what else are you supposed to do? It's, it's June. It's baseball time. We're in the Midwest. Be play, they should Chicago, be playing a lot. Yeah. 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 Lots of rain. Looks like more rain in the forecast next week. So... Perfect day for baseball. This is not it. This is definitely not it in Chicago. Today was supposed to be opening day, wasn't it? Uh, originally, yeah, I believe so. Well, it's a, it, you know what? It's a perfect day to talk about the Chicago Bears. How about it that? Is, it is. Um, read us, The Athletic, Adam Hogan, CHGO Sports. Uh, what else? Uh, you can get our podcast anywhere, Spotify. You know the deal. Uh, watch us on YouTube if you're not already. And go to obviousshirts.com to get our uh, stuff. I got the uh, Bears, Walking Bear, Bears hoodie on today. Oh, we got a special deal, um, too, by the way. Um, let me get this in right here, Adam Hogue. We have a, a giveaway, Kevin. So if you're listening early in this podcast and having fast forward past, past all our small talk right now, we have a giveaway. Let me confirm this giveaway. We have three Walking Bear snack back hats available that we want to give away to some listeners. And I wanted to kind of reward our longtime listeners with this opportunity. So these are free Walking Bear snack snap back hats. Um, very cool, very sharp hats. Um, so here's the question, Kevin. And I want listeners, viewers to respond to me and Adam Hogue on Twitter, and the first three people that do will win the hats, uh, free from obviousshirts.com. Again, those are the, th- we have three Walking Bear Snap Back hats to give away. So here's my question. Which former Bears player was asked to describe Aaron Rodgers in two words, but used three? It's a favorite soundbite of ours, a favorite player of ours to cover. 
We've played that soundbite numerous times over the years. So if you've listened to us five years now, six years now, you know who it is. Um, give you a better chance on this. But here's the question again. Which former Bears player was asked to describe Aaron Rodgers in two words but used three? Which former Bears player was asked to describe Aaron Rodgers in two words but used three? The first three to reply or tweet at Adam Hogue and I will get uh, a walking bear snapback hat. How about that, Cap? Am I eligible? No, you are not. Okay, because so, I know the answer. So thank I you. Won't, won't yeah, it away. it's it's a famous soundbite. It is. We, it it's is a popular one on this podcast. So we just want to thank our listeners and thank our friends at ObviousShirts.com again. Great hoodies, great gear, great shirts, and now a chance to get a free hat from them. So. All right, Kev, want to get into it? Let's do it. All right. The, the way I want to do this podcast is we had our Q&A with Ibraflus. We had our Q&A with Poles. We had our Q&A with George McCaskey. Now I want to have a Q&A with you. You up for it? Do you that's have some one of those, for me? I was going to say, it's one of those where uh, what who does not belong in that conversation, <laughs> right? <laughs> Matt Ibraflus, George McCaskey, Ryan Poles, Kevin Fishbane. No, Ryan you belong, belong in this conversation. Doesn't belong. Why don't you I belong? I think I have... I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll offer you more detail, probably than. Ooh, shots fired already! No, that's well, not true. We I, we had we had very enjoyable conversations with the Bears brass uh, this week. It's all it's it's what I mean. We talk about it. it's like our favorite um, trip. Not just I mean, yes, there are, there are perks to a trip like this to go to Florida in March, but from an access standpoint, you know, uh, it's it, it's just a relaxed atmosphere, and you and and I think for those who read our stories. Your story from our conversation with Ryan Poles, my story from our conversation with Matt Eberflus, our story from our conversation with George McCaskey, you, it's a, it was, they were much better, more informative interviews and, and you know, some of those big press conference settings. Well, they're more relaxed. There's yes. not a bunch of cameras they're, in their faces. Nope. It's a, it's a, the, the pressures, you're, you're, you're two weeks into free agency, so that pressure's died down. You still got a month until the draft. And most importantly, John Z, they have not lost a game yet. No, no, you're staying in a five star resort. Your family is there. The food is good. The drinks are good. You should be relaxed. But yes, there's more time. I think Ryan Poles talked to us for about 20 minutes. Matt Eberflus for 30. Then he joined the Hogan Johns podcast after that. And then George McCaskey talked for 20 some minutes as well by the by the ocean not a bad location to talk to uh your friendly reporters from the chicago media all right question number one you'll see how i phrased all these kind of in a similar way number one fish man are you buying what the bears are selling about having enough around quarterback justin fields i would say no um you know, we know that they made an aggressive move to try to sign Ryan Bates, so that kind of tells you that they're not satisfied with the offensive line. I just think, it, like, I, I think right now, no, but I'm still, I want to see what this offense looks like on May 1st, even May 5th, you know, after the draft, after you, you, some more veteran signings. I, like, I just don't think they're done yet. I don't think they've done enough right now. But but I do think that there is... um. You know, it's it's obviously it's very different than what Miami's doing, right? It's uh, extremely you know, different. Extremely different. Even the Jets, the Jets have kind of loaded up. The Jaguars, we saw what those teams did. Now, different draft capital situations, different salary cap situations, different owners in those spots too. Um, but I I think you know you know I've talked about this is if Justin Fields is great. He'll be great with Byron Pringle and Darnell Mooney and acquainted with St. Brown. Like we'll see, we'll see glimmers of that. You would like to see better players around him, but I, I just think that I, I think you'll still be able to find a way to, to evaluate your quarterback, even if it's not greatness around him. The most notable quote, or one of the most notable quotes, remarks delivered from any of the Bears brass members was Ryan Poles describing Lucas Patrick as a prick. He's tough and he knows it. He has to play that way and he loves it. Or the Eminem. He's got the Eminem that Matt Eberflus loves. He's, he's, he's got a motor and he's mean. Was it mean or mo- a mean motor? 
say mean, I think it was motor than mean, but mean motor uh, stands out to me. What do you think about that? Like, what do you think about the the pursuit of pricks for his offensive line? I think it's great. I, th- I think this offensive line has needed that meanness, that tenacity. You know, what's funny is last offseason, you and I both heard from talking to people that they actually were looking into that. Like, this isn't like a new thing. Like, they they were scouring the offensive linemen in free and seeing, and obviously in the draft. And, and I think Tevin Jenkins, we learned, you know, has that style to him. Um, and, and that was a welcome sight, I think, for a lot of Bears fans when they got to know his personality. Um, but yeah, I, I think that what, you know, Ryan Poles told us the day, you know, his intro press conference, he, he told us off to the side that he was disappointed watching the tape that guys weren't running over and helping out their quarterback. Um, so you get a Lucas Patrick in here. Um, you, you get a full season of Tevin Jenkins. You see what you have, you know, who else, they're going to bring in more guys, obviously. But I think that's the right style. I, I think and, and you want it to reflect your GM, your assistant GM, both offensive linemen, both come from teams that had guys like that, right? Look, look at Ian Cunningham with Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey, right? You look at what Kansas City did the last offseason to overhaul their offensive line and getting a guy like Creed Humphrey um, as their center. So, the, you know, I, I think that's that's the right plan uh, for, for that position. We haven't talked enough about Ryan Poles actually saying that Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borm are going to be tackles. I yeah, think take them off I, your uh, take them off your guard t- depth chart. Well, I, I don't want to do I don't want to do that completely because I, feel I like already did. I'm done. Did? I'm, I'm, I moved on. It's too much work. You, you believe him then? It's uh, hard to find I, tackles. I it think is. it's I, easier to find interior linemen. Yes, or an interior lineman who has the versatility to play right tackle than it is to find legitimate quality. Offensive tackles, is it not? Uh, I'm with you. It, you know what? There's a lot of you know as you go through how many guys that we look at in the draft are going to be NFL guards that play tackle in college, right? A lot of those guys are, are great Their tackles. Arms in college. aren't long enough. They don't have the feet. Yeah, they're only six three. You know things like that. So, you know, I, I, I think for the Bears' sake, you'd like to think that Jenkins and Borum are tackles for the long term. Financially, it puts you in a great spot, resource-wise. Um, I just don't think anybody really knows. You know, I, I like what did like we talked about this, right? The Chiefs were looking at offensive linemen last year, so Ryan Poles certainly has an evaluation of those two. Admittedly, I rolled my eyes at the praise of Byron Pringle. I, I just you just had to, right? No, you're on you're you're on the Pringle train. No, I. I I don't mean I, like I, I, I don't. I don't want to say like I was annoyed by it. Yeah. But like I, I know there's certain limitations to to what he could do as a player. Because if 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 he was a better player, you don't see the moves you're seeing right now in Kansas City after they they got rid of Tyreek Hill. They're signing guys left and right. It's an yeah, you're right. But I mean, they signed two guys. I mean, I, I think I think we can probably agree that Byron Pringle's Ryan Poles' guy, right? Like that's that's somebody that he's he's got a long history with, knows well believes in um so i i get why he is so excited about pringle um but you're right i mean this is there's a reason that kansas city it wasn't a massive contract you know it's not like you know other teams could have grabbed him that the chiefs could have brought him back so but i mean if you're if you're ryan poles like you don't have anybody else right now he, he loves darnell Mooney. True. that's it that, then it's pringle you have so, to talk him up yeah, and I think too, like they'll if they draft a receiver in second round who's more skilled than Pringle, um, you know Ryan Poles is still going to like that he knows everything there is to know about Pringle. And there's something to be said, you know, I, like we got a story up today um, with colleague Daniel Popper about the Cleo Mack trade, and one of the things Brandon Staley said this week in Florida was when you trade for a guy who you already know, you just take out so many of those unknowns. It just it, it makes it such a different kind of acquisition. So it's not to say that Ryan Pulse is correct that Brian. It's not to say Byron Pringle is going to be great, but I, I I tend to you know have a little bit more faith in something like that where when you're going to sign somebody that that he knows everything there is to know about Pringle right now. I think the best way I could put it is if you wanted to to, to really identify a team's belief in a free agent, look at the term of contract. 
They may like Pringle. They might like him more because they have to because he's on their roster, and I understand that. He is one of their top three receivers at this very moment. But if they really believed in him being a long-term part of their plan, he would have gotten more than a one-year deal. Speaking of that, Johns, you, you know who, if you're going to use that rubric, which I agree with you, is the right way to do it? You know which free agent the Bears like the most right now? al Qadim Muhammad. Two years. Two years and a decent amount of money compared to the other guys. So, like that's that's your guy right there. That you know, obviously they didn't get you know they didn't get Ogan Joby. Uh, Justin Jones got two year contract as well, I believe. Yeah. So those you know those two guys. Um, but the way this league is going, the way that where the holes are for the Bears, you'd like to see that spent on on uh, the offensive side of the ball too. Question two. Are you buying what the Bears are selling about offensive coordinator Luke Getze? This a lot is of talk about Luke Getze this weekend. Pat, this they weekend. got no, they got no choice, right? I mean, if you're not going to make big moves in free agency on the offensive line or wide receiver, you're banking on two things: you're banking on Fields making the own the personal growth, and you're really trusting that Getze's going to be the guy. So I'm not I'm not buying it yet because it's, it's just it's a first time play caller, but I do think that there's something to be said about Getsu's getting head coaching interviews. Um, you, you think about the the coaching tree he comes from, the experience in Green Bay, the way players talk about him. I mean, I'm very interested to see it. I'm very intrigued, but I'm not. You know, this is not. It's a first time play caller in the NFL. Yeah. Simple as that. Like you just can't. I, I can't buy into that, but I understand why the Bears are excited about it because, like, they're they're. You know what? It's similar. It kind of reminds me of Johnsy last year when the Bears did nothing to help their cornerback situation, right? Uh, did nothing to help um, other spots on the defense. So what were they telling you? That Sean Desai is going to get it done. They had a lot of belief in Sean Desai, and they kind of put themselves in that position. They had no choice. So I, I still I, think this, it finished. I still think it. I mean, it being Sean Desai's defense finished top ten, did it not? It did. It did. It. I mean, for the most part, I think that they they were, they proved to be right about that. Um, but I, it, it's a, it's a different situation because it's the first year of the staff, obviously. But it, it kind of reminds me of that that they're they're really trusting the scheme and the coaching from Getzey. Yeah, and Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus have both talked up that scheme. That's what I was trying to get at because that's what we heard in Palm Beach. Here's what I like about it. Here, here's what I like about it in terms of it being different from what we just saw with Matt Nagy. Number one, we know that scheme transcends place. You get what I'm saying? Like that tree of coaching, that Shanahan McVay tree. There's a reason why there's, what, six or seven of them now in the NFL? Because there's that belief that it transcends city, it transcends team, it transcends quarterback in a way. Works for Aaron Rodgers, works for Jimmy Garoppolo, you know? I like that. Works for Jared Goff, works even better with Matthew Stafford. See what I'm saying? Like, could work for Tua in Miami. Could work for Kirk Cousins up in Minneapolis. The, the tree has... A lot of branches. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm moving my hands an awful lot. But I like that. I don't know if the Andy Reid tree, especially offensively, has that, if I'm being honest. The second part of what I like about it is that's Luke Getze's only job. Matt Nagy tried to do so many different things. And I've always... I never really liked that it was Bill Lazor... Or Mark Helfrich calling plays for the quarterback during practice. Never liked that. When they weren't the actual play caller on game day. You know, I, I get it. They were just sending the plays in. Maybe there wasn't much to it. Maybe I'm overblowing it. But why not develop more chemistry between the actual play caller, the actual game day play caller, and the quarterback? The Bears didn't want to seem to do that. And obviously we, we saw that played out. Matt Nagy was the head coach trying to call plays. Luke Getzey just has to be the offensive coordinator, and I think that's going to be a benefit for Justin Fields. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I, I think when we get out, you know, we won't be able to see much in OTAs and minicamp, but you, you want to talk about top storylines. Justin Fields number one, but like one, one A, one B is Luke Getzey's offense. 
And that's going to be just, we're going to be analyzing it, trying to understand it, trying to see how he's going to use fields. All those things are going to be just like every day at Hallis Hall. We're going to be watching different wrinkles and, and, and different ways to see that it's going to do what they hope it's going to do. It's hard to imagine, but spring is almost here. We had a really nice day on Saturday. It felt like spring, and we are so close to feeling that soft grass under our feet. First, we got to get our lawn back. Thankfully, Sunday gets your lawn growing and helps to keep it healthy all season long. Sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork or the nasty chemicals. Their custom plans include fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn with ingredients like seaweed, iron, and molasses. You can feel good with kids and pets being around. Just attach the ready-to-use pouch to a garden hose and spray it takes less than 15 minutes. Best of all, this stuff really works. And Sunday is offering our listeners 20% off right now. Full season plans start at just $129. Right now, you can get 20% off at checkout when you visit GetSunday.com slash Adam20. That's 20% off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash Adam20. Question three. Are you buying what the Bears are selling, specifically Matt Eberflus, about the hits philosophy? We heard more and more about it earlier this week in Palm Beach. You know what? I am. And here's why. I think that we've seen, I guess it's a little different because it's a head coach, but I think we've seen in the league that if you're a coach and you have a philosophy and a system that does not play well with your players, you're not going to last long. And this guy was a defensive coordinator for four years in Indianapolis. He was a linebackers coach in Dallas. He was a coach in Cleveland. He was a a successful defensive coordinator with 18 to 22-year-olds running this in Missouri. So I think that you, you hear the way Colts players talked about him. I just think that in a grant in the big picture way, I do buy it. I think that he, you know, he, he doesn't get to this point in his career if that doesn't work. Now, will there be certain players that just not going to mesh with? Of course. But I think overall, as an overall philosophy, I, I'm, I'm still buying that. Um, will, as a snarky reporter, will I roll my eyes at it? Of course. It's what I'm here to do. Um, but but I, I think that I'm, I'm going to show some confidence that it, it's it's worked at previous stops. So for the most part, it's going to work here. Okay, so why the snark? Like, wh- where is that? Because that's just what I do. It's just Kevin it's Fishbane me. way of yeah, life. It's my brand. Your brand, Snark. Got to yeah. Got to got to buy into that. Got to lean I, into it. Oh, well, well, that's what Matty Rufus is going to need. He's going to need some buy in, some lean in. Yeah, I think generally, readers, listeners, viewers, Snarky Media, we want to roll our eyes at the acronyms, but that stuff is prevalent at every level of football. <laughs> I, for not even just football, but for other sports, like that type of messaging and the simplification of messaging, where players understand their their role, not only the roles, but how accountability is going to work in their organization. So where they mess up, they know where they messed up. If they're not hustling, they could be they could be punished for it. Like that type of mantra or whatever whatever have you like it's just prevalent in sports i don't know why the extra snark why the extra eye rolls over the the acronyms like the m&m one developed i think garnered even more eye rolls but it works players players memorize that stuff they do like it, it sticks with them more than just be you messaging where there's a lot of different messages if you if you get my point uh, I think that you and I both agree. Um, and again, it's obviously a little <laughs> coaching uh, nine-year-old baseball and being the NFL head coach a little different. But I always used to tell my teams, you know, they are not going to outwork us, right? Like no matter what happens at the end of the day, like we're going to be the ones that work harder. And, and you hear NFL coaches say that. Uh, so, you know, th- there's there's something to, to that when – you're in a league of parody. You're in a league that, you know, games are decided in the final seconds. You know, the quote unquote game of inches that extra, you know, you look at Deandre Houston Carson 
if you go back to last year when he ran 110 yards or whatever it was a field to drag down Debo Samuel. You know, things like that can make a difference in a game. And if you have that attitude throughout the team, you can understand kind of why um, it will work and why it, it should resonate. When I played grade school football, we got this shirt that said, hold the rope, which is a common I don't know, football saying, but it had a picture of a stork or a seagull or something with a frog being partially swallowed, but his hands were outside the mouth and was, was trying to choke the seagull, which was trying to swallow him. This is very graphic. <laughs> yes, I think I still own the shirt. It's probably, Gosh, you know, I hope, probably don't, I hope probably don't, PETA's not listening. Probably don't want to smell it, but I, <laughs> The the football coaches that are listening right now know exactly what I'm talking about with this 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 picture of the stork. I don't even know if it's a stork, but a, a seagull, whatever, whatever have you, a bird trying to swallow pelican. a frog, pelican, pelican, good. And the legs are sticking out, but the the frog head is inside the mouth, and it's just the arms underneath and on the neck of the pelican, choking, trying to fight its way out of trouble. Just uh. You know, the messaging of sports there. You know, I'll say this. Since, you know, we do coach sports, you and I, all the times that I've heard from a, from coaches, and I've told them this, NFL coaches, I've told them this, all the times they say, got to get on to the next play. Next play is the most important. You got to move on. You got to have a short memory. All those cliches that they use, I find myself using them all the time for nine, ten year old, eleven year old boys, whether it's like football, and I need my quarterback to get over the interception that he threw, or my receiver to get over the pass that he just dropped, or my pitcher on the mound who just plunked the kid in the behind. How he's got to get over that emotion and get to the next pitch because that's the next important. You know what I'm talking about, right? You have to move on to the next play, the next snap. Um, I don't know how we got into this conversation, but I use it all the time. All the time, and I told Bears coaches this, I find myself repeating what you have said to me over the years. I use it now in the baseball fields and football fields up around my house. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'll tell the kids, guys, this is where we're at. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. By the way, it's my, uh, it's my 10U uh, 2018 Bulldog Association Tournament uh, champion trophy. Oh, I thought you were going to mention the Cubs picture of the World Series. That they didn't actually go to in 1984. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? No. What's that yeah. picture right there? The pennant or the, the picture above, above it? the pennant? Oh, that's the White Sox celebrating the 2005 uh, World Series. I don't care about that. Never mind. Next question. Question number four. Are you buying what the Bears are selling about their overall plan? I think this relates to all the questions I just asked you previously. But the plan. George McCaskey talked about it. Ryan Poles talked about it. Matt Eberflus even talked about it. I, I get a sense that Matt Eberflus, and I put this on, on Twitter, that he's comfortable with this plan, even if it doesn't mean a lot of wins in his first season. As much pressure and scrutiny as that brings him, I think he's comfortable with it. Now, I don't know how he's going to act like after a three-game losing streak this season, but right now in Palm Beach, Florida, we seem pretty – Content that this year is going to be a bit tough. Yeah, I, I, I get. I'm half buying it. I think this is another situation, Johns, like I've alluded to earlier, that they just don't have much of a choice than to operate this way. Like they don't have a lot of cap space. They don't have a lot of draft picks. They don't have a lot of good players. They have a quarterback that they believe in. We think, or at least you, you have to see what you have. Like there's a, there's more than enough there to think that he could be the guy. Certainly, I just don't know what else they could have done. You know, Ryan Poles, he he he, you know, joked about all the other GMs got to go, you know, got to go play, and he had to go kind of sit quietly when when you know the Tyreek Hill trade, Devonte Adams trade, you know, Russell Wilson, um, all those things going on, and the Bears are signing Nicholas Morrow. You know, it's tough for them, but I just don't know how they could have put themselves with those teams to do those kind of things. I just think that they, like, I think this is, they are putting 
their hopes in being in position to do what those teams did next offseason, right? And if after the 2022 season, let's say they go 7-10, and 10, but you finish that season saying Justin Fields is the real deal, then you go next year, you're trading for the, the best receiver who's coming out of a contract. You're maybe moving up in the first round to go grab a left tackle of the future. Um, you know, you're going to have all those resources. So it's just like they're waiting a year, I guess, to do that. Um, the question is, is, you know, it all comes back to fields. It really does. It's just like, we'll say, I'm going to say it all year round. It, it just so much of this comes back to uh, how well he can perform this season. My s- most serious criticisms of what they've done is I don't think they've done enough around just the fields. I, I, I don't. I don't. But I understand what they're trying to do. And I actually think it's the right course. Would you like to see another $4 million spent on a receiver who has proven capability, who has a proven track record? Yeah, because I think he needs that help. And who knows, maybe the Bears have tried, but they were asked to overpay, and he had to come back on the price. George McCaskey said that he's been impressed by Ryan Pohl's ability to stamp hat, really. And not go past those price parameters because we've we've seen Ryan Pace do that when he really wants a guy, he's willing to go well, all in a little bit more. Not to throw a little joke in here, Johns, but is it surprising that uh, someone in Bears ownership is content with the GM not spending a lot of money? But uh, I know where that joke is going, but I don't think it applies with. All the no, spending no, in the no. past. The Bears aren't. Yeah, we, we you record know, setting just... deals here or there. Khalil Max, you know, becoming the. Well, at that time, he had the, the biggest defensive player contract in league history. Did he not? Correct. Jay Cutler's record setting deal. So. The Bears spend money. I just look at their facility. Um. George McCaskey used his line about you know trying to win the Super Bowl every year. Like when he said that I'm I was thinking to myself, "Oh no, he did it." Like he like he honestly it took him a long time to use it, but how did you feel about it? For for me when he said that and then he started to bring it back a bit, it told me that he's on board with the plan, that he needs to be patient, that they're tearing this thing down to build a certain foundation for the future. As much as George McCaskey wants to win, he seemed to understand that there's going to be some hurdles in 2022 as well. Well, yeah, I think it's it's just the uh, you know wishful thinking of George McCaskey to see what the Bengals did and hope that the Bears could do the same thing. He mentioned but, the Bengals. Yeah, and those are completely you know there's some similarities there, but like you know you, you can't go into 2022 expecting the Bears to win the NFC. No, yeah, I mean, great. Nobody went into last year thinking the Bengals would win the AFC. But I, I think that he just wants to be able to always operate as if this team has a chance to contend. And that's okay because, look, they went 12-4 and four when nobody picked them to be higher than third place in the division, right? They went 13-3 in 2001 when nobody picked them to win the division. Like, we've seen this franchise, you know, be good, you know, when, when they have, it's almost, you know, it's funny too, John's, it's almost like, you know, I wonder if, if some members of the old Pace Nagy era wish that they treated the 2018 lead up the way Ryan Poles is, made 2018 a bit of a transitional year, went all in in 2019. Because then the arc is different. The entire arc of the Nagy era was you never got close to what you did your first year. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's like they're kind of, I mean, again, that's not why they're doing this the way they're doing it, but it's, it's setting the standard a little bit differently to allow them to grow into this um, and be able, and Ryan Poles has really said this a lot, sustain winning. Like too often this Bears team, right? Haven't had back-to-back playoff seasons since 05, 06, correct? Correct. Yeah. It's a long time. It's a long time when you're in the same division as the team that does it. It goes to playoffs just about every year. Yeah. So yeah. I I get it. I get what George wants. He doesn't want to be a part of a teardown rebuild necessarily. Um, but look, if if three years from now this is a team that's going to be perennial contender, we'll look back and say this was a great plan. If three years from now you and I are 
coming back from Florida, having met the new GM and head coach again. Well, no, it didn't work. Simple as that. I'm just optimistic that he's no longer, I don't want to say he's rooting for flash in the pan seasons, but that's been the bear success in a sense. Lovey brought stability. I get that, but there's been so many seasons, not so many because there's been those seasons, like the ones you just use as examples where they're just they're flash in the pan success. You need more than that. You need more than that. They haven't had the foundation and, George McCaskey seems on board for trying to build that foundation. It's good. Last question, number five. Are you buying what the Bears are selling, specifically George McCaskey, about their new front office structure? Hmm. Um, what are they selling? What's their sell? I guess the... my question and my, my question within the question is do you think George McCaskey is going to stick it out <laughs> and, and you know what I'm talking about or is he going to hire yeah. like a Cliff Stein to fulfill that Ted Phillips role or is Ted Phillips coming back or will Ian Cunningham's new role as assistant GM be enough layers where polls can go directly to George McCaskey now for anything he needs but still have Debate and contentious debate, even and disagreement with Ian Cunningham and other members of his football department. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's an interesting dynamic. Um, and you know, George McCaskey said he's still learning, right? Which, like, yeah, you, know, you would think the guy who's you know been with this team his entire life. Um, you know, maybe he should have been in this role earlier. Or, or you know, we always talk about the Rooney family, and if he had found different roles within football to feel more comfortable being in this position that he's in. Um, like, you hope that he's learning, and that after a few years of doing this, he's really confident in that position. Um, I don't know. I, I like. It's funny, Johns, because I think it's hard to believe in a football operation in which anything you have to do is you have to report to George McCaskey when you look at the track record, right? But then again, he's in charge. He's a, he's the chairman. He's in charge of the team. So like what His else team. he can do? So like, you know, I, I don't even know if like having somebody theoretically above the GM would make it easier or better. I think you're just, you just want to, know that Ryan Poles is being allowed to do whatever Ryan Poles wants. And I, I just don't, I don't, I have no, no idea if that's taking place. George McCaskey's going to let us know that it is, but we don't, we don't know. We don't I know really, if there was a, we don't know if there was a guy that Brian Poles wanted to sign and George like, eh, I don't know. You can't underestimate the amount of things that land on a GM's desk. I mean, it's travel, it's hotels where they're staying, it's the meals, it's training schedules, individual and team, practice schedules, it's equipment, it's all the resources, you know, virtual reality, hot tubs, all these things come down to the GM's desk, plus your scouting reports, how you want grades to be implemented, how you, <laughs> where you want your scouts going, you know, beyond contracts and their salary cap management, there are so many things in modern NFL that lands on the GM desk. That's why I like he can now delegate to an assistant GM. I'm not saying that Ryan Pace, Jerry Angelo, or Phil Emery didn't delegate. But now you have an actual right-hand man in Eden Cunningham to delegate to and debate things with. Ryan Poles has already given us examples of, of him and Ian Cunningham debating how they want to pursue free agents in terms of receivers this year, this offseason. They argued, they debated about it. I think that's beneficial. Uh, yes, would it help if Ryan Poles was reporting to, I don't know, Bill Polian, whatever. I'm just using his name because he basically hired Ryan Poles. But you get my point. At least having yep. Ian Cunningham and having that that 
ability to delegate some of those responsibilities to whether he's just how to handling scouting schedules, whether he's in charge of certain practice elements that could help in evaluations in more ways than one. No, I agree. I think, I think that's probably the best part of this new power dynamic. I said, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious how the McCaskey polls part of it is going to work, but yeah, you're right. The, the Ian Cunningham element and the Trey Cozio element. I mean, being able to bring somebody in at that high level of position who you know well and somebody in gaining able to do that before the draft is huge. Um, so I, I think that matters. So you, you got to imagine that, that element of this dynamic works. Um, you know, whether or not the... And, and I'm glad that Poles is, direct, is reporting directly to McCaskey. You take out, you know, a little bit of the middleman, I guess. But um, it's just it's just going to be interesting. I, I'm... Does this mean, Johns, by the way, that we can ask George McCaskey football questions at the end of the year? You know, he always deferred those. Now you can. Right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Who else? He's learning. Yeah. He's learning. I mean, Ted well, Phillips is so. like Ted Phillips was like in charge of the football budgets. Never really said no to, to contracts, whether it's Ryan Pace trading for Khalil Mack, signing Mike Lennon, or Jay Cutler getting a massive deal from Phil Emery. Never really stood in the way, but... All the other budgets, scouting budgets, travel budgets, again, food budgets, meal planning budgets, all of those will go to the GM and then to Ted Phillips. Now all of those go to George McCaskey. So maybe there there will be another employee there that plays an active role. We'll see. But for now, this is what we have. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Cavs done. 20, the 2022 Bears. We'll see. All right, we're done. Um, that's it at, at the end of these podcasts Adam Hogue always asks me any final thoughts am I supposed to ask you if you have any final no, thoughts no well, I don't have any final thoughts I never do do you have any final uh, thoughts yes go read the story I did with Daniel Popper about the Cleo Mack trade um, it was just it, it, a fun element of being at the athletic that we get to do a story like that which is you get the Chargers yes we collaborate the Chargers angle the Bears angle um, so go check that out. As you mentioned, Dan Pompey's wonderful piece, you know, wonderful and sad, obviously, about Steve Michael McMichael. And um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's all I got. Be sure to check out our our merchandise on obviousshirts.com. Again, here's the question: Send a text, not text, a tweet to Adam Hogue and I with your answer. First three that reply. We'll get uh, a hat, a free hat from ObviousShirts.com, Hogan John's hat. Which former Bears player was asked to describe Aaron Rodgers in two in two words, but used three? Which former Bears player was asked to describe Aaron Rodgers in two words, but used three? Follow us on Twitter. You know the handles. Read us on TheAthletic.com. Check out Hogue's stuff, Hoagie Cat stuff on CHG Sports. Check them out on YouTube as well. Hit our subscribe button on YouTube. You know where they get the podcast. That's it, my friend. You good, Kev? I'm great. Everybody have a good and safe weekend. Stay dry. Yeah. Stay warm. Very true. Very true. All right. See ya. Hey, what's up, Flues?